Hi friend, hope you had a great week. So today I want to talk to you about the book of Acts. The book of Acts was written by Luke. It's the same Luke that wrote the Gospel of Luke. And the Gospel of Luke ends with like Jesus passing and then returning and he comes to the disciples and he talks to them about like that they get the Holy Spirit, right? That they get filled with the Holy Spirit. And then that's when the book of Acts actually starts. Um, Luke ends. Acts starts. Um, at the beginning of Acts, we hear about Jesus and how he says goodbye to them. And yeah, it doesn't say exactly the Great Commission, but like he gave them the Great Commission pretty much like, hey, it's your job now to preach. And he said, wait for the Holy Spirit. And then eventually we find out they wait and wait, and then they get filled with the Holy Spirit, right? All the disciples. And then what happens? After they are filled with the Holy Spirit, they start going out into all the world and preaching the gospel. They start going out and doing the miracles Jesus was doing. They're healing people, they drive out demons of people, they bring hope, they restore hope again, and a revival starts happening. You know, all of those places they're going to, people coming to know Jesus, coming to know like the good news of the gospel, and everything starts to change. It's incredible. And there were only 11 guys, they added another one, so 12 again, the one guy fell off the deep end but when they went out they had such an impact because they walked out with the Holy Spirit they were filled with the Holy Spirit and then they started sharing and when we keep going through the story we're gonna see persecution of course not everybody was happy with them preaching the gospel because there were a lot of people that didn't believe that this was actually true there were a lot of Jewish like leaders or Pharisees that didn't believe like that Jesus was actually the Messiah. And they believed like those people are teaching something that will confuse our people and it will bring a lie towards them. So they were trying to stop the disciples from doing that. It wasn't bad motives or anything. It was really genuinely they wanted to make sure that there wouldn't be like any wrong message preached about who God is. And one of the greatest ones of those that were persecuting was actually Saul. Saul was a man that really went after the Christians with a passion because he really grew up Jewish, studied, and was really in love with the Jewish faith with God like he really didn't want anyone to destroy it or bring like a wrong message so he was very firm on like hey you know we need to get those people out so not everybody's getting confused and not a lie will be portrayed so he chased after the Christians persecuted them and had them killed not a good thing right and one of them first time we hear about Saul was actually when Stephen was stoned. Stephen was like sharing the gospel and sharing about Jesus till the last moment of his life. And that's the first time we hear about Saul. He's standing there and watching. He's standing the, you know, the stoning. He's standing there watching the stoning of um, Stephen. The next time we hear about Paul, like um, Saul is when he's on the street walking down the street with his groups of probably some kind of military people or something and he's persecuting the Christians again he's going after them and then on the middle of the street a light shines in front of him and he stands there and he's getting blinded and then he hears this voice and that voice is telling him why are you persecuting me Who are you? And then he finds out it's Jesus that he's persecuting. That moment brings a total change in that man's life. But you know what happened next? Saul is called to go to a town and stay there. And he goes there. And who disciples him? Who shares the gospel with him in a deeper way? It's the Christians. Now imagine... You are teaching the gospel to somebody 
that just chase after all of your friends and try to kill them. Wouldn't that be a little bit scary? Wouldn't you have some doubts in your head about like, oh, I don't know. Maybe he's actually faking it and he's trying to get us killed. No. You know, the disciples had probably the same feeling in them. They were probably afraid a little bit. But then they did it anyway. They said, okay, God told us to do it. And so we're going to. So they went. And they discipled him. And then what happens? Paul becomes really powerful. He's going out and sharing the gospel with so many people. So the greatest enemy becomes the greatest friend and the greatest to share the gospel. Isn't that amazing? I think it's so beautiful when you read through the story of Acts and you see redemption. You see like how somebody that's so, you know, bad at one point <laughs> turns in so good and changes everything. He even dies for the gospel at the end of his life. And I think it's really amazing reading through the book of Acts as well from the point of how they preach the gospel. So when they preached to Jewish people, they made it relevant to them. So they spoke in their language, not like the literal language, I don't mean like English or German or whatever, but in their language where they understood it. Like he spoke to them in a way like that they could understand. He spoke to them in a Torah way. If he spoke to other people, he spoke in their language and the way they understood. I'll give you an example. When he went to Greece, he started preaching to the Greek people, right? But before he started preaching, he walked around town and he looked at all their gods and all those things that they were doing. And then he found like this little altar, this little area where it says to the unknown God. And that's how he starts sharing the gospel with the people there. He starts by sharing about all their gods and saying like, look at all your gods. But then I found one where it says the unknown God. And I want to tell you about that one today. And that's how he preaches the gospel. So he makes it relevant, right? He makes it relevant that people can understand. He doesn't change the gospel, but he makes it understandable for the people there that they can relate and connect with. And he also talks about, which really struck me recently when I was reading it, that he saw already the message or like that they talked about the children of God coming in the poets from Greece. Isn't that amazing? So it already happened there. Like, they kind of already knew and he related to the poets, which were kind of like good people at the time. Like, they, they were looked up to at in a saying, like, because they were like, oh, they're like the artists or whatever. And it's very interesting that he looked to those and mentioned those. It's kind of like, almost like you would mention Hollywood today, in a sense. If you mention a movie today and relate it to the situation. Kind of similar. Not exactly, but like, kind of. So isn't it amazing seeing that going through and seeing like how God works through his disciples, how he changed the world through like 12 people. Isn't that incredible? And thousands and thousands of people came to know God. So I want to encourage you. Read through the book of Acts. Be inspired through it. Let it speak to you. Let it encourage you. Let it bring courage to you. And also, let it make you think of like living the Great Commission with the people around you. Because one of the easiest ways Jesus has given us is loving our neighbor. Loving our neighbor in a true way, in a meaningful way, in a way that they really, that we genuinely care. It will change the world. And it's so simple. And then share the gospel in a way that people will understand. When you have relationship, it's a lot easier to do that. Because you're already connected. So God, I just want to pray for every person that's watching this today. I want to pray that you give them courage to share their faith. Father, I want to pray for a fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit over each one of them. Like, <coughs> to give, like, strength and to move forward with you, Father. Like not to be afraid in going and speaking the truth. 
Lord. Not to be afraid about persecution or being looked at in a funny way. But being joyful about the gospel to share it. Father, I want to pray that you give them vision on how to share it with people. That you give them ideas on how to connect with neighbors and people around them. And how to share the gospel with them. Like you showed the disciples in Acts. Father, I want to pray that you bring signs and miracles along with every person, you know, that's watching this. That, like, miracles are happening and people see it, like how powerful you are and how wonderful you are. But the main thing I want to pray, Father, is that they experience your love. Thank you, Father, for that. And I just want to pray blessings over every person that's watching this. Encourage them today. Bless them today. Give them hope. Give them joy. And just go with them in this week. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Okay, friend, be inspired by the book of Acts and read through it. Have a blessed week. Bye.